What are we going to talk about today? Well, you do have a couple of documents in your files tab in this meeting, so if you can find that, that's fine. You also should have hopefully been sent them ahead of time from um, Lisa and Daryl, and if you need them, of course, reach out. Page two of the manual for EWBBB has a overview of what it does and also a what's new section. So feel free to open that up and follow along, but I'm going to take you pretty deep into what what that means. What's new for this year? Nothing too scary and also a section I'm calling take note, which is really things that have been more of um, a source of confusion or questions that are more common or maybe some issues with the app in the past. So we're going to talk about what's new and then we're going to talk about taking note of a few things. And um, so just to jump in, what's new? Um, this year we've got a field that's called year round and it's defaulted to no. And that year round field is important because it guarantees that the end user tools transfers your year round trap sites into the next year's map. So it saves you that time and trouble to map them again for the following year. So if this is a year round trap, you should change that to yes, that field. Otherwise it's defaulted to no. And there are also some new trap site types, trap types and lures that are available as choices. Otherwise no change as to how those fields are handled. Pretty simple so far. And then we also have a field sample ID that is remaining, but is optional this year. Last year it was a required field. And then we were kind of confused as to what to do, and so we were putting in none. This year it's optional, so you don't have to worry about that too much. If it doesn't apply, you can just leave it. And then the base maps changed a little bit from world streets to world imagery. You may or may not notice or care. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so I want to show you that because I can show you on my iPad that view and how to deal with those. I'll open collector how to deal with those layers in your map. And I'm connected to Wi-Fi and it's kind of working at loading the maps that I've got here. You guys are all familiar with this loading screen, I'm sure. And it's going to open the last map I was in, which happens to be our training version of your 2021 EWBBB trapping collector map. So I'm in this one that's ended with training so we can play in it today if we need to, um, but yours will not have that training appended. It will it will just end at the 2021. Um, and so you can see I've got um, a couple of sites that I've kind of practiced with some little symbols if you can see that. And in order to toggle that layer, it's this little kind of stack of papers is your layers. And there's trap sites that you can toggle on and off. So you see my symbols disappeared. If I turn it back on, there they are. And then this world transportation base map is really, if I zoom in, it's a little better view, but it's got the streets labeled for you depending on your zoom scale. So when you're zoomed way far in, like I am now, all the little streets are labeled. If I turn that off, that labeling disappears. So if you want to toggle that on or off, you can just go to this layers menu and go ahead and toggle on or off. So I'll close that for now. I wanted to show you that business. And none of these new fields or the base maps really affect the workflow, but there is a workflow change. So let's stroll back to last year's training and review the place a trap workflow to see where, where this change occurs. It's this workflow to place a trap which now includes a required activity of install. So let me show you what that workflow looked like last year. Last year, it would usually be more of a beginning of the year thing, typically, most typically, although it could happen at any point where you decide to place a trap in a location. And placing a trap stores the trap location on the map and the information about that trap site itself. And then all future visits were considered a trapping activity. And this is the list of the types of activities, monitor, replace, remove, inaccessible, those types of things. And this year now we're adding an install trap activity. And so when a trap is placed, 
you'll fill out that data form and immediately follow that by a by an install activity on that trap. So let's look at what that looks like. And I'm going to make this big, so hopefully you can see it really well. So to place a trap, you would tap this little plus button to add. Choose and remember, I don't know anything about your program, so I'm just going to do a random choice here. Complete your and again, totally mismatchy. I'm sure you guys are seeing that this is. Doesn't make any sense, but complete your data form. And I'm just putting test and kind of random things just to complete it. Uh, I'm going to say I'm in a residential if I can find that. Is it up at the beginning? Well, I'll say roadside. And see this little blue dot is actually my house, so if you need to find me, I'm home. Um, and I'm going to say year round. I'm going to leave that at no. And I'm just going to make sure that this says it's a test. And I'm going to update my point. And submit so that would be placing a trap. And then immediately to follow now this trap site that I've just placed is selected because it's got that blue around it. That blue dot is just my GPS locating me. So this orange trap site is selected. I can see automatically and my very next step will be to do a trap activity data entry of install and I can do that by either tapping this link or scrolling up on the data form to this activities which also has this link here and that opens the activity form. I will add. I'm going to fill this out like I really am and the activity type will be install. And this is not required, so I'm not going to worry about it and I'm going to give this a test. And then here's another caveat that we want to pay attention to. Here's a survey date. You can see right now it's a bug that defaults it to obviously 1899 is not correct, but the easy fix is to open that and tap today. And there we are with today's date and time. And submit. So that's our that's our big change to workflow is making sure that when we place a trap, the immediate trap activity on that place trap is installed. So that's new this year. And that brings us to the take note section already. Moving right along, it's really not, there's not a lot of changes there. But take note is important. Um, that first one, the survey date um, that we already pointed out in that activities table, you wanna make sure it is today because it's defaulting to a really crazy date. One thing I like to do is once I've completed that data form in the activities table, I always take a moment to review each field for correctness and consistency, and I always hit today one more time at the end before I hit submit. So just a reminder, really take note of that. And then the next bullet there is that relocate the trap workflow. This brought about a little bit of confusion for some of us last year. Let's look at what that looked like. So remember we had placing the trap ha follows this kind of place the trap, then we have a trap activity of install or perhaps any other visit might have been any of these. And then relocate a trap involved first a trap activity of remove and then you'd go back to the beginning kind of, you'd physically move that trap to a new spot, place the trap, and now we know we would also then follow that by install. Well, some of the question involved is, should the original trap location then be moved or deleted? And the answer to that is emphatically no. <laughs> that trap symbol remains on the map, and some of us thought if you if you're relocating a trap, we shouldn't be seeing that symbol anymore, but this is actually an important part of our database entry to have that point there and the last entry, the last trap activity should be removed on that site. So you want to be sure that you understand when you are relocating a trap, the last trap activity on the old trap should be removed and then you place the new trap with the first trapping activity of install. If maybe a, a point was placed in error and you think it really should be deleted, 
That's something that your supervisor should approve and a GIS professional should perform for you. It's not easy to recover a deleted data point, and so it's important to know that that's not something you just want to do um, without a lot of thought and multiple heads on it, multiple opinions on it. So remove is a part of the relocate workflow, but a remove activity that's recorded for any reason should not result in actually deleting that symbol from your map. The site symbol should remain. And again, just to emphasize this, this removal or lack of year end removal activities is really one of our biggest data quality issues every season. So you want to remember to record remove when you're relocating a trap or removing a trap for any reason. And also um, it helps determine the end of a survey period, which is a vital piece of information when the data is exported for upload to the NAPIS database. The ArcGIS collector application is especially helpful because data collection can happen without internet connection with a little prep. Today I'm in my basement and I am using the internet and so I'm live feeding back to our online map. But this last bullet point of offline map areas is an important part of our workflow out in the field. So you want to be sure that you're preparing by downloading offline map areas and following the disconnected workflow. Some of you might remember what that looked like. This was from last year. The disconnected mode workflow in ArcGIS Collector is super handy. It's also a real problem at the moment um, Esri is working on a bug that is not allowing some of us to download offline map areas. So it's something that you should note as um, maybe we might be having some issues with and might need to do a workaround, but it's, a, it's really the beauty of ArcGIS Collector in normal terms. And the workflow basically goes like this, that you begin connected to the internet as I am now, um, download map areas, then disconnect from the area from the internet, go out into the field, collect that data. And once that's all collected to your device and saved and you return back to an internet connection, then there's a synchronization um, phase where you sync that data back up to that hosted map service as well as pull in data into your map. So that's an important part of um, the ArcGIS collector application that really helps us in the field collect data offline. And there's lots of video explainers. Hopefully some of you had time to check out the um, AFIS PPQ field data collection playlist on the AFIS YouTube channel. Um, there's quite a few there. There's information on how to download a map area, some checklists, parking lot tests before you go out into the field to be sure that you're ready for a disconnected workflow, how to use the layers and measure tool, some field editing that can be done, and even the portal sign in to collector, which is also something that kind of trips some of us up. We're already at quiz time and um, <laughs> don't worry, my quizzes are super easy and we're going to do it together. The end result is this quiz is going to send you an automated email that says you took this training and completed it. OK, so I'd say you all have completed your training. As you can see, there's not a lot of change here. It's mostly paying attention to adding that install after placing a trap, the install trapping activity, and paying attention to that remove act when you have when you want to remove a trap to add that trap activity and note that it's not going to disappear from the map. It's still all part of our data um, collection technique. Then finally, um, maybe you have questions that you just haven't brought to me today, or maybe something will evolve as you get started using EWBBB. And so we always want to make sure you know where to get help. We know Lisa Jackson and Daryl Bays are our kind of joint noms for EWBBB. They're always the first ones to go to for any kind of survey protocol question or if, if training is needed in the future. If you have iPad issues, that's opening a ticket with CECIT. They're still kind of adjusting to IT moving into one group instead of specialized groups, so give them a little patience, but also feel free to reach out to me if you need a little extra help um, getting iPad issues sorted. 
And then um, any kind of portal access needing and needing a, a user account for new users or issues with yours or application issues. You always want to go to your supervisor and then your supervisor will kind of sort things up the chain of command from there. But as you can see, probably they'll talk to a local GIS specialist for your area. And, and there's also this email address here, webgis.connect at usda.gov. And that's answered by a group of admins. So you, when you email that, you get kind of a group of, um, of people that can definitely sort things pretty quickly. So it's a real good um, avenue to kind of look to. And finally, if you have any questions, I just want to leave the floor open. We've got five minutes to spare in our little quick half hour whirlwind through EWBBB for 2021. Um, so does anyone have any questions for me at all on anything we covered or anything I can help with? Thank you, Jenny. Um, appreciate your uh, your help with this. Looks like you got a question in the chat popping up. I'm, I'm seeing the dots oh, go. All mind. good. Sorry. <laughs> no, no questions. All good. Wow, Gary. Well, thank you for saying so. Yeah, um, I, I do want to say that you know, as as you start using it, sometimes you know what you saw here looks different or 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 you kind of forget the gist of it. And so feel free to reach out. That's why we're here. Um, the end user tools, any one of our group between Mark Crane and Richard Chubb and Vladimir Rusinovich and myself, we are always ready to help with this. And any, any one of us can answer your questions. And we also, each of us in our um, email signatures have a little form that you can fill out if you want to officially request some support. Um, but we're a pretty informal group and, and we're here to help. So, Lisa, thank you. Lisa says great job too. Yay, all right. Well, um, Daryl, do you have any anything else that that strikes you as something you want covered? No, I appreciate you. Okay, well, thank you for kicking off such a kind first 2021 training and um, like I said, reach out all of you and thank you for your time today and being so well prepared and so on top of paying attention and participating. It's all it rests in your hands as as much as it does mine. So thank you all. Mm -hmm.